It is late Wednesday, July 24th, and we are monitoring newly formed Tropical Storm Dorian as it moves off towards the west-northwest at 20 miles per hour. And the five-day Hurricane Center forecast would suggest that we will have a strengthening tropical storm as it continues to move in a general westerly fashion once it starts to approach Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands by 2 p.m. next Monday. So this is certainly going to be a storm that we're going to be monitoring for at least another week or so. Evening visible and nighttime standard infrared satellite imagery reveals that Tropical Storm Dorian is fairly well defined. We see two distinct outflow channels, one along the equatorward side where it is also conjoined by the intertropical convergence zone, and we also even see some distinct forms of a poleward outflow channel despite there being more dry air to the north. As you look here towards the enhanced infrared, we can see that convection is still persisting near the center of circulation and that is despite the storm currently moving over somewhat marginal sea surface temperatures but this will not be an inhibitor for long because as you can see Dorian is right on the threshold for tropical cyclogenesis based on the current water temperature profile but as Dorian continues to move towards the west it's only going to run into more in the way of warmer and more favorable waters below it. Here is a microwave satellite pass of Dorian and here you can see that it has a well-defined surface circulation as also being shown by the ASCAT satellite pass. You can see the wind barb is indicating a very closed and small low-level circulation, but a very distinct one nonetheless. And you see that we don't have any wind barb showing up right near the convective mass because this is rain-contaminated observation. But this is the type of structure that will help to maintain Dorian as it progresses over the cooler waters for the next day, and thereafter it should begin to intensify once again. As we take a more regional view of the tropics, we can see Tropical Storm Dorian just now making it into the eastern side of the picture, just off to the west of the Cape Verde Islands. And as you can see, there's really not much in the way of strong westerly flow in the mid to upper levels ahead of the storm. So therefore, the wind shear values look fairly healthy for this storm to slowly intensify over the next three or four days. Now, as Dorian begins to approach the Northeast Caribbean, this upper level low just to the north of San Juan will dictate whether or not we see a highly sheared tropical storm continuing to move westward into the western Atlantic or will this upper level low start to move more so towards the west or towards the north thus continuing to allow the storm to be ventilated under very light upper level winds. The latest wind shear analysis from the University of Wisconsin continues to reveal that we have very light upper level winds currently over the tropical storm as denoted by the dark blue and navy blue colors indicating shear values less than 10 to 15 knots but if the upper level low were to stay where it is now for another week or so, the tropical storm would run into a brick wall of westerly vertical wind shear well in excess of 25 to 35 knots. In terms of the low to mid-level steering flow for the tropical storm over the next three to four days, conditions are fairly straightforward for a more general west and west-northwest track. You can see the powerful Atlantic subtropical ridge oriented from southeast to northwest so that is why Dorian is moving a bit more north of due west at this current time and that motion is expected to continue during the short term because we have a weakness out across the western Atlantic. Now will this pattern continue beyond the next four to five days is going to be a very big question that we will have to answer as Dorian starts to get a little bit closer. This evening's run from the American GFS model was somewhat aggressive by at least maintaining Dorian as a moderate to strong tropical storm but more importantly it's maintaining a more westerly track throughout the next seven to seven and a half days and as you can see here as we go into the early to middle half of next week we have at least a tropical storm approaching the southeast Bahamas. If Dorian were to continue to slowly intensify throughout the period it would eventually be steered more so by the mid-levels of the atmosphere therefore we also want to take a look at the 500 millibar relative vorticity forecast from the GFS which does help to reveal the steering factors in the medium range a little bit better and as you can see, as we go into day six and seven, much of the central and western Atlantic is still being dominated by the central Atlantic subtropical ridge, which does extend all the way into the Bahamas. And we're going to have to determine whether or not the western periphery of this ridge will eventually make it back into Florida and the Carolinas. If the ridge extends westward, then we can also expect a more prolonged westerly path of our tropical storm, which would place the United States under the gun from a landfall but there's also the chance that this troughing along the east coast will persist or deepen a little bit more than forecast which could also induce a last minute turn towards the east just offshore. So this far out we can guesstimate as to which scenario would be more likely but we just truly don't know this far out 
and there's a bunch of different model solutions. Overall though, there is a fairly good consensus for the next five to six days with a gradual track towards at least the eastern half of the Bahamas, but what happens thereafter, especially with regards to the intensity, uh, that's just way too much up in the air at this point. One of the final animations I will show with regards to the GFS forecast would be a look even higher up into the atmosphere at 300 millibars and this is the level where we can start to pick out our upper level lows that we can also see in water vapor imagery and just north of Puerto Rico this yellow area of vorticity that represents the upper level low that is currently just to the north of San Juan and as we go into days three and four you can see the upper level low is trying to be shifted a little bit more so towards the north in the general vicinity of Bermuda and this could open up just enough of a narrow pocket of favorable upper level ridging to the south that will continue to ventilate Dorian and the day 7 shear forecast from the model also shows the upper level ridge continuing to move in tandem with the tropical storm with light upper level winds just to the south and strong upper level winds just to the north of our tropical cyclone. When compared to other models, so far the GFS has probably done the best job especially compared to the European ECMWF. Although the European model is typically the more superior of the two models, the European has been struggling with Dorian so far. For example, this is a look at the low level vorticity and sea level pressure. And out here in the East Atlantic, it's really struggling to even pick up on our tropical storm. It really just shows nothing more than a moderate to strong tropical wave. And you can see it continuing to move westward, which does appear to be accurate. As we go into days four and five, it is in agreement with the GFS by taking our area of low pressure just to the north of Puerto Rico. And as we go into day six and day seven, it is showing a track continuing to move westward into the Bahamas. And I will say that this is a westerly shift compared to what the European was showing yesterday. At this time yesterday, the European was showing more of a northwesterly motion towards Bermuda. As we switch over to the European day five forecast for sea level pressure, along with 500 millibar mid-level steering heights. You can see once again that the tropical wave slash tropical storm Dorian is expected to be just north of Puerto Rico. And in terms of the steering, we still see a very dominant central Atlantic ridge situated fairly close to Bermuda. And much like what we saw with the GFS, it is showing the same amount of troughing out here across the mid-Atlantic states along with the east coast. And as we go into day six, and day seven, you will notice that the troughing becomes a little bit less amplified, but we still see troughing out across the Great Lakes, so this would likely induce more of a gradual bend towards the northwest, but I must go ahead and say it again that the models oftentimes get the overall pattern wrong this far out, or even when they do get it right, they're still not going to get it 100% accurate, and any subtle change in the intensity of our tropical cyclone or the intensity of the ridging and troughing can make all the difference once you go beyond day five. So it's still just too early, but it is good to start to at least get an overall idea as to what parameters and factors we're going to be looking at as we go deeper into the forecast. Finally, before I leave you guys tonight, I will leave you with one final high resolution satellite image of the Central Atlantic, including Tropical Storm Dorian. And this just goes to show you that we are dealing with a fairly healthy tropical storm today. And this is somewhat rare considering how far east this storm has developed this early in the season. It could be a sign that we're going to be in for a very long Cape Verde hurricane season with long trackers starting fairly close to Africa and working their way westward towards the United States. But we will just have to wait and see on that. But best of all, we have plenty of time to monitor Dorian. It's still at least four days away from impacting the Northeast Caribbean if it were to take that more due westerly track. And we have at least a solid week to monitor the storm for our interests out across the Southeast United States. It won't be into the Bahamas until another six to seven days.